What is up guys? Thank you so much for stopping by at the channel. I hope everyone's having a great day. So without further ado guys, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. It's going to be rockers and cab corners time. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So make sure you watch the video from start to finish. You can't miss a thing because you could easily mess this job up. And if this is your first time stopping in, please consider subscribing. Other than that guys, enjoy. Okay, so first off, the rockers and corners that we'll, cab corners that we'll be using are uh, Keystone product. Yeah, you can either repair them and it doesn't last, or cheap ones and it's not as, it is, it's a pretty thick steel these are and they're, they're really good. Used them a lot. What I'm going to do guys, I'm going to show you exactly how I'm doing this. So if you were to take all the doors off your vehicle, you're going to see these little circles. Those are the spot welds right there. And what you're going to do is you're going to drill all these out, okay? Um, and find out we're going to cut, of course, first. So, like, for example, we're going to go from here down. And we're going to go all the way over. We're going to save this pillar. We're going to come over here. We're going to cut there. And then we got to keep drilling, okay? And then you want to drill. Uh, you got to look, really look closely, but there's some spot welds on here. And... Once you go up from underneath, this is when it gets tricky because you're doing this because your rockers are all rusty. So you want to separate the seam, which is right here, as you guys can see. That's what we're doing. We're separating that. So let's go ahead and get this all drilled. guys I don't want to go all the way through I just want to get to that first layer right there so we can peel all this back we don't want to some of these you got to be careful because like I actually went through there so but yeah just uh just try to be careful but you want to go right off to that next layer and you're not going to really bust through it completely once you put that seam sl splitter through it and start hitting away it's going to bust that weld so we're going to keep plugging away So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to go ahead and break the seam completely across where you guys see where I did the uh, where I drilled the slots here and then I'm going to do this for the underside as well because you got to do this completely and then I'll cut it and it all should just fall off like the other side. And that'll break that free right there. You got to really get a good angle on that one and once we're done with that we're going to start I'm going to go ahead and just drill all the bottoms and do this, repeat the same processes up on the top and then we'll peel this away. But some of these you don't have to drill out as you can tell. Pretty much just pops right out. Like. There was pinch welds there but not anymore. So you could possibly get away with doing it like that too but we're going to keep drilling but sometimes you just can't tell where the pinch well is because it's so rusted basically we're cutting it here it's flatter it's a nice flat area to do body work one corner here's a nice flat area to do your welding your nice seam and same there you go up here and you have a lot of a lot more curves to match up you got this whole thing here just a little simpler to do it down here, finish product straighter. Unless, of course, your rocker is completely right, rusted right. and you can't do that. But It's good up there, so no need to cut it out. So we got everything separated, so that's why we're doing that. And then, of course, you know, we cut the cab corner out as well. So let's get to it. I don't recommend this job to anybody. <laughs> Hats off to you collision guys, that's all I gotta say. That's not fun. All right, I think it's still good though. I think we can put this on eBay and sell it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot. I mean, it looks pretty rusted out, but show that when you turn it over. Yeah, rust city. 
and that's where it goes is from the inside out that's mm. that's how it rusts Guys, this is the sandblast we're using walnut i already hit it up pretty good here but i'm just scaling it that way we can uh, get a good nice smooth surface to tack these new rockers in um, i'm going to be using this on the frame as well i'm going to sandblast the entire frame i need to get more of it uh, i got two bags but it seems like we're blowing through it pretty quickly little before and afters for you. So if you see right here, we didn't go all the way. It's because the integrity of this right here, this corner is actually still good. We're gonna go ahead and keep that. Uh, I will definitely clean the inside of it though with the sandblaster. Okay, so now we're at the point where we're able to take the new rocker and we went ahead and just put it on there for now with some clamps. And what we did is we just kind of eyeballed it now. We're, we just sized it up. We just traced around where we needed to. And I went ahead and cut those pieces, which are right there. All right, so once I've sized it, at this point, once you get sort of close, what you're going to end up doing is you want to go ahead and as you can see, there's a little overlap here. Um, instead of actually just trying, still trying to eyeball it or trying to draw a line, to match it up uh, we're gonna do this in reverse order now we're gonna go ahead and draw the line on this body line right here okay um, and then same goes for here and then we're gonna go a little bit lower though because there's not enough room here to do the body work um, or the filler I guess so uh, we're gonna drop down a little bit more and cut over here but then we're gonna trace here okay uh, we're gonna trace here we may have to cut we may have to trim a little bit more but what I'm trying to say is um, we're going to cut into the into the, the pillars now on the truck that's actually on the truck. Okay, and then we're going to size it up till we get it right. So it's going to be, should be f flush and level. Um, now these little, these little vice grip clamps right here are awesome. So maybe if you guys are doing this project, look into getting something like that. So next what we're going to do, guys, is again, we're going to go ahead and size it where we need it. I don't need to video all that. You guys get where we're going. Uh, once we take this off right here, we're going to go ahead and trace and cut. And then once we've taken that off, as you can tell, you can see the line, which is this one right here we're going to use. We're going to cut there. We're going to cut this panel right here. Um, and then, of course, right over here where we drew. And we're going to trim it up a little bit here. That way it fits good. But pretty much all we got to do now is just cut up here, trim here, and then put it on. What you're looking for when you're sizing this up is the body lines. I know there's some gaps, but you know we can work with that. But like this right here is a pretty big gap. But once we put the cab corner over it, you're not going to see it anyways. But what you're looking for is like, you know, if you run your hand across or your finger across it, it's gonna you're gonna follow this body line right here. That's what you're looking for. And like right here, that's what you're doing. So once we've confirmed our fit, we're going to go ahead and put self-tapper screws in it just to hold it in place for now. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and test fit the doors. So we're going to put the doors on and make sure everything lines up. Okay, this is what you call an air punch flange tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just punch holes so we can put our tack weld inside of the holes that way. That's how it's going to hold it to the truck. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and do our spacing. We're probably gonna go about an inch and a half, two inches apart. We're gonna do this ridge right here and then on the other side of the rocker as well on the bottom here. So we're gonna go ahead and start punching our holes. So now that we got all the holes punched here, we're gonna go ahead and just hit it with the little wire sander here. We're gonna go ahead and bring it down to bare metal so we can get a good contact when we start filling in the holes with the spot weld.
Guys, so at this point in the process, what I did is I just went ahead and just laid a bead down all the way around where that hole was cut. Now here's the other side. Obviously we haven't done these yet, but what I did is I just, you know, I laid the bead down completely around and then I did it, um, not for there yet, but um, for here on this side. So once we have that completely done, we're at the point where we can start smoothing and leveling this stuff out right here. Next what I'm going to go ahead and do is just whiz wheel this stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to smoothen it all out to where when you run your thing, when you run your hand down here, it's going to be nice and smooth and level. And then of course, you know, right here as well. This is actually pretty challenging right here, trying to get all this nice and straight. And as you guys can see, I went ahead and just hit all the little holes where the spot welds were, filling it in with weld. So after we've grinded down the welds and of course got it to this point right here, we're going to be uh, buffing it up with a, uh, what is that, an 80 grit? This is a 36 grit, wore out, but it'll take some of the high spots out, smooth everything out. Just uh, open a fresh can of this filler and a lot of times the uh, resins and stuff are sitting on the top. Just mix it all up so it all has the resins where it needs to be. We're just going to do one one side at a time so we don't use more than we need. Probably, well usually they do a pea size of hardener to a golf ball like circumference, like of a golf ball. But it's colder here so we're going to increase that. It's not 70 degrees. So just do a, a thin, thin layer. Hey guys, so once this is dried, we're gonna go ahead and hit this up with some 80 grit. So I didn't video the entire process, but it took me probably about an hour to sand all this down nice and smooth. This is gonna be a light coat of filler. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this right now. And we'll go ahead and add our hardener. Okay, and there's the coat of filler right there that I put right over the top of it. So we brought the truck outside. It was pretty nice, so we might as well take advantage of it. And it keeps the dust outside. But what we're doing right now is we are sanding down from 80 grit down to 150. So that's what we're doing right now. We're pretty much done. We're just kind of getting the little small nook and crannies, the odds and ends, just to make sure it's really smooth. One thing to note is the cab corner right here. You, don't, you want to make sure that when you run your hand down it that you don't feel any sort of ridges or bumps or anything like that. Just make sure you knock all that down because this is really what everyone's going to see. I'm not saying neglect all this extra stuff right here. Okay, so next what you're going to do is just take this uh, scotch bright red scuff pad and you're just going to dull the metal. So we're going to do this whole pan rocker panel. Uh, cab corner, we're going to go probably about an inch above where we did it, like about right here. And then, you know, about an inch above where the, you see these little fine scratch marks. After you scuff it up, it should look something like that. You'll see the paint's going to be really dull. We went up about that high. Okay, so now we're just doing our prep work right now, as you guys can tell. Uh, we're just using whatever we have laying around, but you guys can use bags, you guys can use whatever. I mean, at this point, all we're doing is we're just going to go ahead and primer the rockers and cab corners. So we're going to go ahead and get to it right now. We're going to finish up the other side, and then we'll go ahead and get into paint. All right, at this time, we're going to go ahead and stir up our primer. So... 
So this primer calls for four to one, as it says right here on the can. So we're gonna go ahead and fill it up to four. And we're gonna use our hardener. We're gonna go ahead and just fill it up to the one line. And then stir it up. We're gonna bring the pressure down here. Oh, and by the way, since we started the project, we've got almost eight hours on this tank, and this tank was brand new when we started the project. So if you have any idea how much this thing has been through, <laughs> it's quite a bit. All right, now we're just applying the second coat. So now that we have the second coat, I do want to mention something, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, the turnout on this one right here, you guys know how we cut it, and then we had to weld and grind and all that. Well, if you look at it now, especially these cab corners right here. It's flawless, it looks great. You can't even tell where I cut. So we're gonna wait next. We're gonna go ahead and let it dry a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and throw our third coat over it and then we will put the doors back on and call it a day. And then we are applying our third coat. And before Jameson goes, I do want to say thank you so much for all your help, man. Again, I can't, I couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, glad to. Tremendous help. This is amazing. It's done and it's done right with the right stuff and lots of patience because there was a lot of times that I wanted to kind of slow down and, you know, yeah, cut corners, but you just it. can't. You can't rush this no. job. So many hours put into this and it's uh, well worth it now, now that we look at it. And you can check him out at JL Collision if you guys are in the Lansing area or Jackson area, I'd say, or somewhere in that area. I'll go ahead and check him out. He does some pretty good work. So this process took me about 30 hours, and that's between myself and my buddy helping me out. He works at a collision place, so it was really, really helpful that he was there, and I really do appreciate his help. If you don't have the tools, um, you're kind of kidding yourself when it comes to actually doing this yourself. So just consider buying tools and and doing it correctly because even my little wimpy air compressor was just on overload. So, but anyways, we could talk more about that in a separate video, guys. Make sure you continue to follow the build. It's just gonna get better and better. The frame's gonna get done. The truck is essentially gonna be rust free when I'm completely done with it. And it's gonna be awesome. The truck's gonna be a completely different color, uh, more engine modifications, more driveline modifications. Truck show June 22nd, it's gonna be at Ryan's Diesel Service. I look forward to seeing you guys out there. If you can make it, it's gonna be in Wisconsin. Also, I have to tell you, Duramax Life decals are still for sale. Uh, I left a link in the description if you guys are interested in purchasing them. I really do appreciate the support. You guys are so awesome for buying those decals, so thanks for that. But other than that, guys, you guys have a great day. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.